In this video, we're going to see how to create inspection forms, including adding suggested jobs to specific inspection items. We'll also see how to associate predefined symptoms with the inspection forms to make adding the forms to an estimate quick and easy. To create the form, we'll click Vehicle Inspection, then Inspection Setup. One inspection form has already been created for you. It's a general courtesy inspection that covers visual inspections of the brakes, underhood area, tires, and the exterior and interior of the vehicle. You can edit this form if you want. For this video, we're going to create an inspection specifically for the brakes. We start by adding the inspection name. We'll click in the ID field and enter the name. If you want to sort your inspections in a certain order, you can do that by entering the order here. You can also turn off inspections if you need to. We want this inspection to be visible, so we'll check Enabled and click Add. Now, we need to add our inspection items. To do this, we select it from the Inspection List drop-down. If you wanted to edit the pre-built courtesy inspection, you would select it here, but we're going to continue building our brake inspection. Think of the process of building an inspection form as an upside-down pyramid. We're going to start with the broadest categories and narrow our selections as we go. In this case, the inspection is for the entire brake system. We'll narrow that by creating different categories or subsystems of the brakes. We'll use front brakes, rear brakes, and hydraulics. I just enter the category front brakes and click Add. Then, enter the other two categories. Now, we're going to break down each of those categories into specific components. To add these, we choose the category from the drop-down and add the component in the Inspection Items field. We'll do Pads. If the item you're entering is a tire, checking this box will add fields for the tread depth. We'll also add rotors. We would normally keep adding components such as calipers, drums, shoes, rotor and pads for the rear brakes, etc. But for now, we're going to move on. We can further refine the inspection of each component. We're going to add an inspection sub-item of right and check the value box. Next, we'll enter the unit of value, in this case, mm for millimeters. This will add an area for the person conducted the inspection to enter the thickness of the brake pads. Now we'll do the same for the left pads. If you want to add a footer to your inspection form, select it from this list and enter it in the field. We'll skip that for now. As mentioned earlier, you can add suggested jobs to specific inspection items. Doing this causes the suggested job to be added to the work document if, during the inspection, the item is marked as red or amber. To use this feature, you must have suggested jobs enabled. If suggested jobs are not enabled, the plus sign won't be there. Click the link above to see how to enable suggested jobs. To connect an inspection item and a suggested job, we click the plus sign next to the item. This opens the suggested jobs window. From here, we'll navigate to the jobs we want associated with the front pads. We click Brakes, then choose the job Front Brake Service. We could choose multiple jobs if we needed to. This one will do for now, so we click OK. The number of suggested jobs linked to this item is indicated here. One last bit of setup we need to do is associate predefined symptoms with our inspection form. To do this, we go to Setup and click Codes, then Symptoms. Next, we choose which symptoms we want linked to this inspection form. We'll use the noisy brake symptom. We click the edit icon and use the linked inspection drop-down to select the form, 
Then click Update. The symptom has been updated. Making an inspection part of every customer visit will give your customers a quick understanding of the current condition of their vehicle and clearly communicate to technicians what items need to be inspected.